people in that country that, that opt out, if something does happen to them that they need a, a transplant, they go at the back of the list. Uh, and that's a hard opt out. And Austria is getting close and leading the world in, in their rate of organ donation. So in some countries, they make it specifically uh, you're opting out which organ, which organ don't you want to, to you know, and, and then the rest of the organs would be assumed to be uh, donated. So uh, Canada can develop or cater their own system, like with all these different details on how, it, we would want a Canadiana opt out, you know. If I decided to opt out and then I needed a heart, I go to the back of the, back of the, back of the list. Yeah. That's why it's called a hard opt out. Spain has a soft opt out, they, and they've been leading the world in organ donations. And it, what, what we're saying about the opt out law as well is that it, it probably proved to be the engine in, in, in uh, you know, uh, uh, being one of the major factors in, in why donations went up. But there's many other things that still need to be done. You need, you need in Spain, they pride themselves on having excellent teams in every hospital that, you know, comforts the family during that process. And as well, they have many hospitals that are equipped to, uh, uh, if any organs are available in any part of Spain, that the uh, process could be done. Uh, and another very important thing to mention, uh, besides the opt-out, is that Canada needs to start developing um, donations from non-heart-beating uh, donors. Presently, uh, organs are only being retrieved uh, under a brain dead scenario. And uh, again, countries in Europe have been using the non heart beating donations as well. So we're missing out on a, a, a even that much more of a bigger pool of availability. And I understand that there might be a hospital in June, St. Michael's, that might start that process, which is good news. But we need all our hospitals across Canada to start uh, developing that. What we're saying is that we need to maximize the potential. This is a wonderful gift, uh, organ and tissue donations. Canadians from coast to coast want to become organ donors. There should be no reason why we're missing out on any of these organs and, and, and not save as many lives as possible. And that's been our goal from eight years ago. Our goal from eight years ago has been to maximize our potential. And, and Premier Harris said that there, uh, that we should leave no stone unturned. We should mean that. And let's look at all the options. And that's why we want to present the option of opt out and all these other things that can, we feel can benefit this uh, situation. Do you have to do this province by province? Or, or could there be a federal law that would require this? It would be a lot better if a uh, federal law just came in, but I'm afraid it's probably not going to work out that way. The way things look, uh, hopefully we can get Ontario to be the first province to uh, uh, get this law passed. Uh, and as a result of that, I think we'll be able to influence most of the other provinces and then eventually get a, a federal law. Uh, but it would be, uh, you know, it would be a lot better in a better, in a, you know, better world to, to have a federal law passed. You said earlier that uh, you thought you had met God after uh, talking to Mike Harris on this a few years ago, well, I guess five years ago, and nothing happened. Have you met Dalton McGinty on this? And uh, if so, how did he react? Because this bill is from the NDP, and it might not pass. The Liberals might steal it, might, get, might make it their own, but you would have won by then. But did you talk to Dalton McGinty? Well, when I say we've been rejected, I'm, I'm meaning uh, that in the past year, um, Mr. Smitherman, who I met, the health minister, uh, called Christopher his health care hero. And we were a very guy because we thought he was going to step up to the plate. And during that whole year, um, we, we, you know, kept, kept addressing our recommendations and the things to do. And uh, it went unanswered. You know, I haven't heard anything. And, and I haven't heard anything up until day, uh, today. Uh, we did invite the Premier to uh, hopefully attend this uh, uh, conference, uh, but he was busy. I don't want to say that they're not going to do anything. It's just I haven't heard anything. You know, and, and, and they were uh, defending me during the Harris government that I wasn't being listened to. 
uh, Mr. D uh, Gerard Kennedy stood up, uh, I think, a couple of times uh, saying that. So, um, I, I, you know, in my heart of hearts, I hope we can get the politics out of this, which sometimes makes it impossible. But I really hope that they, they look, there's, there's an alternative solution here that, that we can get our, our, our government to start working on and, and looking at. And, and we feel it, it, it's, it, it, it will help a lot of these people that are on the waiting list. So, I mean, I haven't really heard anybody say that, I'm, that we're wrong. At least give us that opportunity and say that we're wrong. I'll, I, I'll stop doing all this. But nobody said that I'm wrong. Well, you said earlier that uh, politicians were uh, believed that people didn't want to hear about it. Is that, from your point of view, the main reason why there's a blockage there? Is you know, along the way, I've, I've met a lot of good politicians, and, and uh, you know, some of them believed that this would probably be a good idea. What I sensed from them going any further with, with it was a fear on how the public would react to something like this. It was the question that was raised earlier, how are Canadians going to feel about the uh, possibility of, of, say, the government owning our organs now? That would probably be the uh, statement, you know? And that's why we need to talk about that to explain why we would be doing something like that. It would be, we would be doing something like that so we can save lives. These are children, uh, sisters, mothers, you know, uh, with a situation that, that medical communities are calling a cure. So Canadians will go for that. That's been my experience. My only problem is, is that I didn't document all, all, the, all, the, all these things while I was on the road, and I should have, but I didn't. Um, and this time we will. You know, we're going to have a, a clear voice from Canadians on how they feel about this alleviate these fears or whatever the, you know politicians are feeling about that how many uh, organ transplants are done every year now on a waiting list i don't have the exact figure and it keeps changing i believe there's i believe there's 4 to 500 i don't know if there's anybody in the audience here that 9400 so I mean, it's probably raised a little bit, uh, but the rate of donations this year have actually gone down in Ontario. You know, from the time that Premier Harris said he was going to double it, it's gone down. Statistics speak for themselves on what's working and not working. How successful has the been in Spain? Um, it has gone down 50 percent, 20 percent. How has the numbers changed? Um, I'm going to get, you know, a much better report, but from, from my conversations with, uh, and my research on that, um, they, they are like doing three or four times as well as we are. From what I understand, there's hardly anybody on their waiting list that doesn't receive an organ. And, um, this started, you know, soon after the law was changed to opt out. And, um, you know, it becomes also uh, an attitude and, and perception, you know, like um, I, the reason, the other reason why I'm excited to go there is because I want to talk to ordinary people in Spain. And, and, you know, I think it's so accepted there that that's the thing to do. Like, you know, it, it, it's not a big deal anymore, you know, and, and I think you know, Canada lags behind that. Another thing I found out was um, sometimes Canadians are reluctant to go to other countries to, to get things that are working there, to tap them over here. But w when Canadians come up with, uh, you know, uh, uh, new things that, that work, we invite every country to come here and use it. And a good example of that was in Alberta and Edmonton, when we discovered the, um, a cure for, diabe for diabetics uh, in, in transportation, uh, the islet of the pancreas. Uh, they must have gotten visitors from every country of the world to come and, 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 and use that process in their country. So, um, you know, it's working in 22 countries. That, that's got to give us enough initiative or enough, you know, to, to let's try it over here. From 
the uh, of the four thousand or so people.